like I say, I mean, it's not really comparable saying that you basically um, hire a girl to perform on a stage or whatever, or you're a star of Hollywood and something like that. Although people in Hollywood did work for me, so I did have star employees and stars, you know, just like I had, it's basically just like Lucifer Starline, the company, for which, I, like, like I said, I proudly called many people in Belfast Starline employees. Like I said, the people of Belfast, the Irish, the, the Irish people, the people you call immigrants, they were some of my Starline employees and Starline staff. And like I said, I proudly called them um, Starline people. Um, a lot of people thought I was German or whatever, and it's like, well, I own Germany, but I'm not really German. But and I had a lot of wonderful people. Like I said, I really, really, really loved them. They were, they were my everything. They were my people. They worked hard building my ships. They worked hard building my aircraft. They worked hard to build everything. And I hope they had lots and lots of offspring and had very good lives. Like, I love them. And there was a depression and all kinds of stuff. And I may have died at some point in time. And that's why for years I'd say, just take me back and let me die. I want to be here. I don't care. A creator and a leader and a lord should die with his people. So like I say, Rick Bush is not my person. He does not work for me. He does not, you know, he has no relation to me. And I hate him. Rodney Briley, I kind of hate him too. But I think Rodney is just a stupid piece of shit idiot. I don't really know. You'll have to talk to him, ask him and see what he's done over the years. Lots of allegations, insurance fraud, embezzlement, uh, lots of things, basically. He was going to spend the rest of his life in jail, pretty much, for everything that he did. So, not to mention drug use and all kinds of other stuff, and all kinds of allegations. I don't really know. He didn't seem like a bad guy, though, and at one point in time he was scared for his life, and probably rightfully so. But like I said, he does not deserve to be hurt. At one time, I was very proud of Rodney and really actually considered him a friend. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know why he changed. Maybe it was over the long years. I don't know. He used to be a good, a really good person. A really, really good person. But maybe time and everything else affects people. I don't know. Maybe they're just the situations. I know somebody was trying to torture him or someone was trying to hurt him or something like that. And I know Rick Bush double crossed and turned his, double crossed him quite a few times. Rick Bush is a really horrible person, and it would stop at nothing, whatever. Rick Bush tried to blame him in court and say that Rodney had had the whole idea, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know. I don't think he, I don't know. Like I said, I hate, I hate saying that any of my people or any of my employees were double-crossed me or turned their back on me because I had so many people and they cared so much about me. Like, they really loved me a lot. They looked at me as the future and the hope and everything. And it made me feel proud and happy. Like I once upon a time was so proud of the human race and so proud of all my people, especially the people of the past. Like those people in the past, I'd often say, you know, give me five of them. Give me five of those people in the past. Give me five of those iron workers. Give me a hundred of those people from, from, from Belfast a hundred years ago. You know, I'll do anything. Those were really fucking good people. You know, they didn't get paid a lot. You know, they didn't always have clean clothes. But they're the best people in the whole universe. You know, we had hope on the future. They had hope in me. You know, I just, and, I, and I just hope I didn't let them, let them down. You know, I tried to be rock steady. I tried to be solid. I tried to never make a mistake. I tried to always think of the future and look ahead. And to, uh, and to keep people from doing things. I was the one who declared war in, on Germany because I foresaw or I thought that, that there was a problem. And it wasn't, I didn't just declare war on Germany. I was sending people over there. I was having investigations and the Germans weren't letting them see things or say that or look into things. I don't really know, but the Germans said, a different, said it a different way. And I had many people there <laughs> go in there. I had French people go in there. I had lots of people. 
I requested lots of people to look over my Germany and see if there were any problems or see if there was something going on in one of those places. And like I said, when they, when they were saying that there are death camps or there were death camps or that, or that something was happening or that people were something, something, I was like, it has to be one of my sites. It has to be one of my, one of my buildings. It has to be somewhere around where I'm working. So they started searching and scouring. And, 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 and like I said, I, I, I told them to use the aircraft. I was like, there's probably going to be some sort of signs of something on the surface. It could be in a deep mine, but, you know, it has to be somewhere. So they started scouring the planet, looking all over. I told them to turn over every rock, go through every, every stone, search every sewer. If there was something happening on this planet, I wanted to know about it. I wanted to find it. If there was someone that was being captured or being kept or being abused, I wanted to find them. We were going to find them. And so, like I say, I'm the epic, large, and larger than life, Lucifer Starlight. Like I said, the Germans found some people underneath, um, underneath, uh, um, uh, what's it called, um, um, Harvard or one of the schools, inside one of the mines, they were chained up there or something like that. And I said, I don't believe in chains on your legs. You know, I don't think you should you should you should wear chains on your on your arms or your legs all the time. I don't know. Some people might say that chains basically reinforce a person's like you know that give them that feeling that that they're that, that they're being controlled. But personally, I think it just you know I don't think it's it's okay to put something around someone's neck or put something around someone's arm or hand. That's not the way I do business. That's not, not the way I do things. You know, I would often say, if I have to go to that level, if I have to go, go to that, that extent, then I'm, then, then fuck it. I'm done with existence. Anyway, so, <clears throat> you know, people go to court, people pretend to be judges, people pretend to be lawyers, people do this, people do that. No one's like me. No one's ever been like me, no one ever will be like me. And very few are probably like my brother. So anyway, I don't know. I had a lot of people that really, really cared about me and really loved me a lot. And I always try, try to do them proud. You know, you have a lot of sniveling, pathetic, bitch-ass people in this world, like Alfa Romeo, Bill Gates, or whatever, and like some other people. Like I say, there's nothing compared to me. There's nothing compared to any of my people. All these lies and stories about Carnegie and this and that. You mean the building that I built? I built whole cities. I bought whole cities. I forget, some people built buildings too, like I said. You have to go back and, like I said, I don't want to step on anyone or say, that's all mine. You know, because there were other great people. There were gypsies, there were, there were a lot of other great people. But, you know, I was one of them. They'd always call me one of the greats. Possibly the greatest. So... I was proud to be that, the great Lucifer Starline. Lucifer Starline. So, anyway, yeah. It was just for my vacation. My, it's just my identity. You know, I had a couple companies in my name. So, in the name of the Lord. Yeah, he has a name. Lucifer Starline, or Brian Bradley. That's why Thomas O'Brien contacted me or contacted my people and he named his child Thomas o Thomas O'Brien and other things like people named their children after me and all kinds of stuff and so that's why there's old Lone Star Hi Ho Silver because <laughs> I had silver mines and all kinds of stuff people wouldn't even understand it with the whole Lone Star and silver and Lucifer Starline, my name, so, people made TV shows, I was having, well, I was having TV shows made, and radio shows made, and all kinds of stuff, so, if you research it, you find out, it was Lucifer Starline, German, some Japanese, some others, some Chinese, uh, there's a lot of things that happened, like, the Chinese were oppressed and even whipped really badly, and when I found out what happened to them, I, you know, we went out there, and we freed them. 
I was always the kind of person that would look down upon someone and said, come, come, there's food, there's water, clean showers, you know. I could do that. I could be that way. And I was. So. So, yeah. And with Germany, we could do that. And when I was with any of my countries, any of my places, even my ships, you know, and I tell my people, if you see someone starving or see someone in need, try and help them out. So my people would try and help out other people. Give to a begging girl or this or that or, you know, try and get people cleaned up, get the soot off their faces, get them showered, clean clothes, all that. So that's why I say, you never have, you never will. Never met anyone like me. You probably will never meet anyone as powerful or as rich or as old as me. A lot of people love me, love them, love me, and I loved a lot of people. So that's why I'd say to Rodney and Rick Bush and a lot of other people, you're nothing like me. You're nothing like them. My people are the best people in the universe and the world. So. And they really cared. That's why people would die for me. That's why people would live for me. That's why people would never give up looking for me, or searching, wondering where I was, what happened to me. And that's why, you know, it's me and my people. It's me and my planets, me and my life forms. You know, we were bonded, we, you know. And I felt the same way about them as they felt about me. Yeah, it took them a long time to take me down, or to get me low. And even then, you know, that's why they say Lucifer fell from heaven, or fell from the sky. Crashed, more like. <laughs> I'd say, well, actually I crashed. And the Irish would say, you landed. it's true. I had a colony ship. Like I always looked at myself as that little like little kid you know and stuff like that but I was actually a computer. You know I was you know the great LSF with the big fins. <laughs> it was this great big huge 2000s 2700 foot long rocket. Um, 1200 foot wide at, wide at the base with these great big 190 foot stabilizers fin stabilizers. And I came in and actually, I think I did one of these maneuvers or something like that. Or I think I actually came and I re-entered. I forget. Maybe I, I maybe came. I forget exactly how I came in. But I just remember the last little bit of it. Uh, I was losing the nose. The nose was falling over on me, and the nose was coming in like this. And I was and I turned the fin sideways and I was angling the jets as far thing like that, trying to get the butt underneath. And like I said, I was losing altitude, losing altitude, losing altitude, and just like trying to get that thing underneath it. And uh, because it was right there at the tipping point. And like I said, I came down, there's this great big huge flat side of a mountain. Or a, a mountain side like that. And I went <laughs> right into the mountain. I just about had it right under. Just about right under. I just, I had just gotten it under, basically. When I was just drifting at a fairly good pace and went <laughs> right into the mountain. And it shoved it right through, shoved one of the fins right through the side of the, of the hull and right through the engine bay. And I don't think there was anybody in there, but there might have been. But it went right through the engine bay and, um, and, uh, and squashed and basically made the ship rounded and oval. And then it slid down the mountain. <laughs> and, and people were like, you've hit, you've hit, shut the engines off. And I was like, you sure? I don't know. And I was like throttling down and then I cut the engines off and it went... <laughs> and we dropped another hundred feet or something like that. And it went... <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. It's on record somewhere. So, I mean, the, the, the extravagance of, of Lucifer Starline um, uh, rocket ship, spaceship, the LSF. <laughs>